Good morning, everybody. Thank you for the opportunity for addressing you today. And it's very appropriate because today is the start of International Fraud Awareness Day. Um, so I think it's, it fits with the topic that I'm going to discuss to you today. So my topic is very much around conducting investigations in data-heavy industries uh, and the opportunities that data presents. But before I proceed any further, I think it'll be appropriate for me to just give you some facts about fraud. Fraudsters do not discriminate, which means that no organization is actually immune from fraud. And it is not about if fraud's gonna take place, but rather when fraud's gonna take place. But I think the best of all, fitting with the theme of today, if you think you love data, fraudsters actually love data more than you. They actually use big data to conceal their fraudulent transactions, and they believe the more, the merrier. So when we talk about data every industries, what am I referring to? Well, in summary, data every industries are those industries that collect, work with, store huge quantities of volumes of data. And some of the examples I got listed there are banks, telecommunications, retailers, short-term insurers, uh, government departments, and many more. So when we talk about fraud in the insurance industry, and that's what my topic for today is gonna to focus on, we need to actually quantify fraud. So what does fraud in the insurance industry cost? Please, I don't want you to go and cancel your, your policies this afternoon. So I want to start off with say that there's no accurate measure around insurance fraud. It's estimated that internationally fraud costs the industry between seven to 15%. In the UK last year, it, uh, in 2012, it was reported that fraud cost the industry one billion pound. Now that's staggering if you think about it. Uh, they also have a very interesting fact was that every hour there's a fraudulent claim exposed in, in the UK. But it's not only a problem overseas. Locally, we, have, we, we experience the same trend. Uh, SAHIA, who's the Insurance Association of South Africa, reports that fraud costs the industry in South Africa about 10%, which m equates more or less to about two to three billion rands. And remember, those two to three billion rands are your premiums. It's your premiums. Um, the, the US has also done a very interesting study, and this, this, this actually really spells out what insurance fraud costs. They, they say if, that if the fraud in the US formed a corporation known as fraud, insurance fraud, that industry would be worth $80 billion, which would rank number 26 above Procter & Gamble in the Fortune 500 companies. That's how serious this problem is. And the first speaker spoke to using data to solve real life problems, and I think this is one of it. And yes, we're gonna, we're gonna ex speak about this example. So what I quickly did was I actually put down the life cycle of, of an uh, uh, insurance policy from inception right until claim settlement. And just at any stage of this life cycle, Data extracted can, and here's an example of it, between 250 lines of data. This is how much of information. Now imagine doing an investigation in an industry like this. Can you imagine looking for fraud in, in an industry that is so overwhelmed with data? So I would like to put it out there today. Who would you employ? So there's fraud in your organization, you're the chief risk officer, who do you employ? Any ideas? Let me simplify it. Let me give you two, two, uh, two, two parties. So I'm sure everybody would recognize the data mentalist. I'm sure we have a few data mentalists sitting among us here today. So for me, a data mentalist is, is somebody that's comfortable working with large volumes of data, can interpret, interpret the data, find evidence, pick up certain patterns or trends. And then we have the super sleuth, Sherlock Holmes. We all heard of Sherlock Holmes. So between these two parties, you need to decide who you're going to choose to investigate your fraud in your organization. But let me give you a few more pointers. Life is about how we see things. So let's give them a job description. 
There's Sherlock Holmes who looks for physical evidence. He's an investigator that looks for physical evidence. And then you have the data mentalist who actually looks for evidence in data. So who would you, who would you uh, appoint? Everybody uh, choose the data mentalist. Raise your hands. People that will choose Sherlock Holmes will choose both. Brilliant. Because that's what we have done at Santam. We, 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 we identified that both these individuals are absolutely important to conduct investigations, data heavy industries. Both have unique skills that they bring to the table. And the collaboration of these skills is what is fundamental in conducting a successful investigation in a data intense or data heavy industry. And this approach is not unique you'll start to see that more and more law enforcement agencies around the world have started to realize the usefulness of a data mentalist that they had stored in some dark room that was punching the numbers. There's, there's, a, there's a current move, there's a current trend and evolve around this data mentalist. They no more sit in this dark room. They actually are out there with the investigation. So when we talk about this combined approach, I think it'll be more very appropriate for me at this stage to give you a practical example. But before I proceed, for those policyholders, I need to give you some form of reassurance. So this is the life cycle, as I discussed earlier, of insurance. So from the day you take out an insurance policy until the claim settlement takes place. And the area that I've ever circled in red are actually high risk areas that business has realized is most vulnerable to fraud. So being wise businesses and insurers are renowned to manage risk, what we have done is we put in tools to mitigate those risks. So you have predictive analytics and so forth. So my, my topic today is gonna to focus on the largest circle, which is actually the claim settlement process, which is the area most vulnerable in any insurer's uh, process to fraud. And we're gonna discuss this. So I'm gonna talk about a, a case study, that we, a case study, and it's, a, it's an actual case that, that took place a few years ago. It's electronic funds transfer fraud, or EFT fraud, that's commonly known. So we have an incident of one fraudulent activity. There was one fraudulent EFT transaction. We did the investigation and we found sufficient evidence to call in the perpetrator who was an internal staff member. Person came in, we presented the evidence and said, yes, the fraud, whatever you got to say, and the person immediately confessed to the fraud. So at this stage, the case is solved. Do you agree? Anybody, do you agree? Is there, any, is there any need to dig any further? I mean, this case was even solved faster than your favorite CSI episode which takes about 45 minutes. But we realized, wait, we need to look at this. When somebody confesses so enthusiastically, there is something not right. So we, we, we started to, to extract all the transaction, financial transactions or payments that this person has processed over a three year period. And during that exercise, we came to about 20,000 lines of data. For you that are seated there, this is nothing. For me that's an investigator, it's overwhelming. Can you imagine me going and investigating 20,000 records? So we, we bring in a data mentalist and we start to partner the data mentalist with the investigator. And the data mentalist comes on board and starts to, to run traditional analytics. Um, you know, round numbers, for example, multiple payments to the same bank account. Once we got the data out of that, the results of that uh, exercise, we started to investigate each transaction. It was definitely less than the 20,000 that we initially had. And we found no results, which led to frustration, but you need to think it's one of two possibilities, and I know you all guys all and ladies all work with possibilities and probabilities. The first one is that we were, we were looking at the wrong data set. Or the second thing is that the fraudster was actually honest. Now I say to myself, do you actually get an honest fraudster? 
That was why he's the fraudster. So we said, let's go back and profile that specific transaction. There was one false payment made to an individual. We also said, let's go back and have a look at the fraudster. And we found out that the fraudster was recently engaged to an Angolan citizen. And we so happened that this payment was made to an Angolan citizen. So we went back to the data and we started to run a query on surnames that fit an Angolan descent. And what do we find? 1.4 million rand worth of fraud. Now we became very excited and said, now we're more adventurous, we're more, we're more excited to work with data. So we decided to take certain criteria and run the, that same criteria for the entire business unit. And what do we find? We get 60,000 records, we're able to refine it, we investigate it, we find another 1.2 million rand worth of fraud. So from what started off as 22,000 rand worth of fraud, we ended up exposing fraud totaling to 2.6 million rands. And the, the monetary amount might be small, but what, what fundamentally happened is we were able to re remove about two or three syndicates that were operating within one business unit. So what are some of our learnings from, the, from, from this whole exercise? We find that there's huge opportunity in terms of using data and investigations. It give, you uncover more fraud, it provides the most accurate impact on your fraud experience. And then you're able to, pre pre uh, to develop detective and preventative anti-fraud strategies. I've, I've realized, I've noticed now recently that companies are starting to collect data on, fraud, on, on somebody's fraud experience. And using that information, starting to profile certain fraudsters and, ad and advise business on that. And for those budding entrepreneurs that are out there, there's an opportunity. Also fundamentally what's very important is that the results from a data analyst uh, query does not prove fraud. What it does, it gives you an indication of outliers and red flags, but it does not prove fraud. You still need ad core investigation to, to solve any case. You need, there needs to be this collaborative, invest, collaborative effort between the, the unique skill of an investigator and the unique skill of a data mentalist. And combinedly, they form an absolutely lethal, lethal weapon against fraud. And I, and I also want to stress this fact that one person cannot execute both functions. It is an absolute recipe for disaster. And on, in closing, I'd just like to say that data, every industry is the way of the future. You and I need to investigate it, and more especially me as an investigator. Because fraudsters do. They actually love data. Just coming back, and I'd just like to stress on one last point around making information uh, relevant from your data analytic exercises, is that we went back from the information we gathered during that investigation, we went back and we tweaked the tools, these predictive analytics tools that were already sitting on our claims functionality. And what it does is it makes your organization more relevant and keeping up to, to terms with the latest trends. In closing, I'd like to leave you with these last quotes most important for me is that information is the oil of the 21st century and analytics is its combustion engine. Thank you.